you know, in a country where we argue about whether pineapple belongs on a pizza, our local councils are quietly building the future of transport in this country. While our politicians in Canberra bicker over budgets, the blokes in high vis are plugging in charges, we can help save the planet and Australia's health, believe it or not, and also make your morning commute far less pollution-y. So g'day, how are you? We're up here, CDV, good to see you again. Thank you for watching, I much appreciate it, and I um, appreciate you watching. Would you believe it's local councils that are doing the heavy lifting, literally, on Australia's EV infrastructure? Forget the feds dragging their feet, it's um, the local governments that are stepping up, of course, installing public charges, left, right, and in the centre. Have a look at trailblazers like the Marybeck in Melbourne, the eastern suburbs Trio, and we'll have a look at Newcastle up north. Plus, let's put an end to that old myth that EVs are paying for roads. Because, spoiler alert, fuel excise isn't what you think it is. But then again, you're probably an EV owner if you're watching this. But yeah, anyway. First off, let's head to Melbourne, inner north, Maryback City Council. Well, I'm in Oberon. It's not really in Melbourne, but I, it's a long way away. Anyway. Those legends started early. They installed Australia's second DC fast charger way back when EVs are still a novelty, way back when we bought our iMove. Now, it's 2025, they've got 22 public charges operational, plus 13 for council vehicle use. It's one of the largest council-owned EV portfolios in Australia, believe it or not. And they're not stopping there. They're targeting 50 to 100 public DC fast chargers by 2030. That's only four years away, believe it or not. They hit that, they're mixing it up. They're owning some, they're licensing some spots to private operators, you know, innovative stuff. Even launched a home to street charging trial for residents without off street parking. So, aiming to solve that big problem that lots of people comment about saying, well, I live in a unit, or what about the people that live in units, blah, blah, blah. Solving that. At the moment, 20 lucky punters can install overhead cables from their homes to charge their EVs right from the curbs in front of their house. And get this though, boom mounted chargers are being trialled as well. So, something like the sci fi arm that swings out and you know, juice up your car, like a spaceship bit and reef before it launches off, that sort of thing. And lots of thunder coming behind me, as the sky's getting quite juiced up right now as I'm speaking. Also, data from the network is showing around 100 charging sessions per spot, proving that the demand is well actually booming, believe it or not. All powered by, of course, 100% zero emissions energy, so um, thanks to their renewable deals, Mary Beck Council is not just um, talking net zero, they've actually slashed operational emissions with wind power and PPAs. Great stuff. Now over to Sydney's east, way you back that way about 200 kilometres. Talking Waverley Council, Wallara and Randwick Council. These three have teamed up for um, Charging East. Sounds like a bad action movie. It's actually a crack of a program, believe it or not. Started in 2019 with just six on street charges. First in New South Wales. Now we can fast forward to 2025, or 2026 as the case may be now I'm filming this. They've exploded to over 300 charging spaces, up from 75 just last year, and that includes 90 ports with 20 DC fast chargers. So, nice work there, eastern suburbs of Sydney. Best part though, 80% of residents now live within an eight minute walk of the car charger. But uptake there though is 3.7%. Um, Turns out when you give people a place to plug in, they stop buying emotional support units, you know, the wank panzers, start buying cars that might actually fit in the streets in a car park. As for sessions, not those sessions, yeah, yeah, sessions up from 40 a month 2019 to over 4,000 now, partnering with jet starts for installations. And New South Wales is government is pushing for more curbside charging spots. Randwick alone added 100 new spaces by year's end. And the strategy is to get 450 ports up and running by 2025, and they're smashing it. So, all these in areas where most folks lack off street parking. Inclusive, equitable, and making the private sector step up, council's now providing just 30% of public charging from 70% in 2022. Great news. Newcastle, even further up that way. They're charging ahead quietly, no pun intended. Started in 2019. They've now tripled the network to over 50 public charging bays at 15 locations. Adding 34 new ports in 11 suburban spots this year alone, all powered by 100% renewable energy from the council's own solar farm. So imagine that, your EV sipping on sunshine while you grab a flat white. EV ownership in Newcastle surged 1,000% in four years up there, believe it or not. I think it's thanks to their right charger and the right place approach, which is good. They own and operate 
everything, keeping revenue in the community for yet more EV upgrades. Nice work. Accessibility is the key, widens designs for disability access, and also allows them to respond to feedback easier. Businesses love it too. Charges are boosting local spending, which is what um, business owners want, and while the drivers are waiting for their charge. It's a win-win for everybody, essentially. This isn't isolated either. Nationwide, 2025, EV sales are up 24.4%, hitting total market share now of 12.1% in Australia by the end of 2025, which was, you know, just last year, just, just back there, just last year. So now we've got 1,272 fast charging locations. That's been a 20% growth since 2024. The Albanese government's chucked in 40 million for curbside and more DC fast chargers. Regional New South Wales is getting 159 new ones across 48 hotspots with the $5.9 million grants from the government. Even IKEA is getting in on the action. 59 chargers across seven stores for not only customers, but their delivery fleets too. Yes, EV trucks, not bad. Council's bridging the gap where um, private operators are lagging. And yeah, all these networks. See, powered by ChargeFox, they're doing all the back end. I don't know what that flies on my eye. That's kind of weird. It's a song title, isn't it? Fly on my eye. Anyway, ChargeFox powering the back end, using the brains of the apps, the analytics, the billing, all that sort of stuff. They have over 300,000 users, believe it or not, and they've also got partnerships with car manufacturers as well. So maybe if you go buy a brand, they might even give you like 12 months or more a free EV charging via, you know, the, par the partnership with ChargeFox. So definitely worth asking about if you're going to buy an EV. So from Mary Back Council's Boom Arms to Eastern Suburbs Walkable Network, Network solar powered um, local charging surge. Australian councils are providing public charging infrastructure. Is no experiment, it's essential. With federal boosts and private partnership though, we're on track for a zero emissions future, which is fantastic stuff. Data shows it's working, high uptake, high, higher communities, <laughs> no, happier communities, cleaner air, lower health bill. So, thanks for watching. And um, really appreciate it. I hope you all, I hope you enjoyed your holiday period. And um, yeah, get in touch with local council and see what they're doing about EV charging. You never know. They might even give you a license or allow you to charge from home if you don't have off-street parking. Ring up your council. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. See you in the next one. Bye.